What's up, YouTube? Capital G here, DN Dual Commentary, doing some new format dueling like I told you guys I would. Not talking about my opponent's rating here because everybody's rating is still kind of low on DN. And uh, I do want full matches now because I feel like it's a better reflection of skill. He opens with Zephyros plus three sets, so I'm probably playing Black Wings. I open with Car Car D and uh, a pretty good back row lineup, actually. Uh, just a really good hand in general. But he has three back rows, so I figure he's going to play Icarus Attack, and that's exactly what he does. He ends up blowing me up with that. So I'm not going to get my car card D, and then he takes out my Accumulator Fortune. So that really hurts because all the draw power in my opening hand has just been, like, eviscerated. You know, I've got Max C, but Black Wings isn't a deck that special summons a lot. So, you know, I'm probably not going to get more than, like, a one-for-one one out of that. He then has Whirlwind, which makes things worse. He probably top decked the Whirlwind. Actually, I know he top decked the Whirlwind because if not, he just would have played it with Zephyros turn one and got like a Kalud or something like that. So he plays the Bora, which, um, you know, he probably already had in his hand. And then he's going to go ahead and he's going to uh, attack with Bora. I, I used D Wall. I used Dimension Wall. And now that I look at it, that was like way premature. I should have just went ahead and. Um, and took the 1700 because now I drew uh, another Akeem Fortune and it's like it's gonna be a little more difficult to get the four chain links that D fissure or that D wall would have made things a lot easier he plays cards for Black Feathers pitching Kalu and I'm gonna try and chain making that chain link one so I play Secret Barrel and he uh he doesn't have a response to that I play Ojama Trio chaining off of Secret Barrel making that chain link three and I'm like, okay, as long as he doesn't have a response, I can just go ahead and I can use my Akeem Fortune and I can draw a bunch of cards and do a ton of burn damage. But it plays Solemn Warning and that one really hurt. And it was smart of him because not only did it completely disrupt my chain so that, you know, if my last card was Akeem Fortune or Chain Strike, he'd be eating a bunch of damage. But he ends up taking uh, 600 less from the Secret Barrel because of that. So, you know, his uh, Solemn Warning actually comes at a discounted rate. So he ends up hitting me for 1700 I don't know why I thought that cards of Black Feathers meant that you couldn't attack and that you could special summon. I think I get those cards. I think I get that card mixed up with um, cards for the sky. I think the other one is you can't battle. So, um, yeah. <clears throat> I drew another Akeem Fortune, and now I have Max C plus two of those. And it's like, oh, my God. That's just <laughs> that's really, really, really bad. Um, it's already looking like I'm going to lose this duel. Um, two Accum Fortunes plus a Max C. I have basically no way to, to get the um, chain links up. With him activating Zephyros, I'm going to go ahead and chain my Max C to get draw one. But even my Accums, they're still stuck on, or, you know, I've only had two chain links, so I can't even use my Accums. <clears throat> he plays, uh, what's it called? He resummons the Bora, which he used to summon um, Zephyros, and he's going to trigger Whirlwind again. Now, I don't understand here. He has two Kalutes in hand because he's already searched a Kalut earlier. Uh, by my estimation, he can just win the game. So he's going to hit me for 16. He's going to attack for uh, he's gonna attack for 17 with Bora. <clears throat> now, he could just drop double Kalut and then go for, um what's that card? Go for Cowboy for game. But I guess he thinks maybe I might have something. So I guess he doesn't want to risk it. I drew another Max C, so it, it kind of sucks. Like, I'm hoping that he'll do something as Chain Link 1, and then I'll be able to activate Max C, and then Chain chain Strike, and then activate Double Accume, and maybe draw, like, a Scarecrow. But he just does the smart play. He just attacks. And, uh, of course, he's just going to collude me for game right there. <laughs> he doesn't do any plays. He doesn't, you know, make sure that he creates any uh, Chain Links or anything so that I can Chain. Okay, so here's the fun part about this deck and why I call it the switch up. <laughs> so as you guys can see, I'm going to side out my Ojama Trios. I'm going to side out my Just Desserts. I'm siding out my Lava Golems, my Acume Fortunes, and I'm going to side in 15 cards. <laughs> this is a conversion deck. Um, my entire side deck converts into Insectors, and basically what you do is you side out all your burn cards. So I'm going to actually side out those, um, those two Chain Strikes and... Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to get those um, secret barrels out of here too. So, uh, yeah, we're going to go ahead and side all of that out. It looks like I have one secret barrel. You can't side like the, the burn completely out, but you can side almost all the burn out. And generally, you can just completely catch people off guard. They're just like, what? So, as you guys can see, I have a pretty decent opening hand Hopper, Maxi, um, Insect Imitation, Scarecrow, 
Foolish Burial, Maxi. Like, this is a really good hand against pretty much any deck in this format right now. So I'm just going to set my Reckless, um, and I'm going to I'm gonna see what happens. It's really not a card that I want to use, so uh, the fact that he MST'd it is great, because I'm like, okay, I'll take that one for one all day. I'm not going to lock down my draws. I'm not going to activate it. Uh, that's mortgaging my future, and I don't feel like that's worth it. So I'm really waiting for him to commit to the board. He plays uh, Pot of Duality. And he hits MST, Whirlwind, and Bora, which means um, not only am I not going to lose, he's not going to like OTK me or anything, but my max C is kind of useless this turn anyways. He takes the Whirlwind, and I'm thinking, okay, well, I've got to deal with Shura Whirlwind turn one. But then he summons uh, Blizzard, and I'm like, well, okay, that's great, because not only can he not special, and he has nothing in his graveyard, but whenever you summon Blizzard, most of the time, all you get is Bayou. He summons, uh, or he gets Breeze from um, Whirlwind, and I'm like, okay, that card is ass. I don't even run that crap. Now, he has three cards in his back row. I'm like, okay, I know you have Icarus attack. So, I'm thinking, fuck it. I'm just going to attack. I know you started out your defense. <laughs> you're not, you don't have Mirror Force still in there, so fuck it. I just go ahead and attack him. I'm like, you're not going to Icarus attack me. And, of course, he doesn't, <laughs> he doesn't have a response because I'm like, yeah, you fucking have Icarus attack set. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to dump the um, the Hornet into the graveyard. And now I'm just going to try and start popping things. And the Whirlwind doesn't scare me that much because he only has one card in hand. So I'm just going to go ahead and try and pop his back row and hopefully my Hornet can live. <clears throat> I hit a Eradicator Virus, which actually is a card that wouldn't hurt me because he just called Traps and I have no Traps. <clears throat> he plays a Lord Darkness, which sucks because I know he's going to get rid of that Breeze. And uh, not to mention, he probably drew another Blackwing monster. <laughs> he ended up drawing Sirocco, which was really, really bad, because now he gets to search whatever the hell he wants, and he gets to start working down the ladder. I'm going to lose my um, my Hopper and Battle, and he still has a Shura. Plus, if I you know can't get rid of the Shura, then he has Whirlwind. So I would say advantage him right now. Now, again, I still have Centipede, so let's see. Obviously, I'm going to try and um, use what's it called. I'm going to try and use... Hornet to start popping stuff, and he shows me the Icarus attack, which I knew he had, but I didn't have a way to play around it, so <clears throat> that really wasn't a big deal. I'm just going to go ahead and set this Wabaku and pass turn. Let's see what he does. Actually, let's see what he does. I know he's going to summon the Shura. Why wouldn't you? <clears throat> this is great. He plays MST, and I chain the Wabaku, so, you know, as you can see, I take the 1800 back. <clears throat> I think he's going to go for uh, Zephyros or Kalut. Oh, no, I'm sorry. He goes for Bora. He's just working down the ladder. Next turn, he'd probably go for Zephyros. <clears throat> but I still feel like um, he's advantaged because of Whirlwind. So at this point, I kind of have to make a desperation play and hope that he doesn't have anything good. <clears throat> so I'm going to um, tribute my Max C for Insect Imitation. This is why I love Insect Imitation and why you never side out your MSTs. <clears throat> and now I'm going to get Dragonfly. And he doesn't seem to have a response. So now I'm just going to go like ape shit on his field. And <clears throat> we're going to get rid of that back row which is a Delta Crow. Again, he sided in all this spell and trap removal, which does nothing because now I'm playing Insector Burn. I'm going to, uh, obviously, I thought about this for a second, and I was thinking about just attacking, and I was like, uh, what should I make? I wasn't really sure, and I was like, man, if he has a Kalut, I'm going to be so mad. <clears throat> so I decided to just kind of go for like the safe play. <clears throat> I'm going to launch my Hornet, take out the Whirlwind, uh, leave him with Shura, and again, I thought about getting Insector Sword, but I didn't like the position that it would have put me in. So I felt like just getting the Centipede was the better play because if I got Insector Sword and um, I equipped it onto like Centipede or Dragonfly, well, actually, it would have to be Centipede to get over to Shura. If I attacked uh, and he colluded me, I would lose my board presence, he would get a monster. Then he would run over Dragonfly next turn, so it wouldn't be very good. And I don't have a lot of defense when I um when I side into Insectors. <clears throat> so I'm just going to get a um, Centipede, and then I'm going to um, make Zen Mains. And Zen Mains is just going to attack, and it's going to blow up the Shura. I feel like I'm in a pretty good position. I have four cards, plus I've got Centipede, and he has a Bora plus no Whirlwind. So I'm at advantage, and I mean, what the fuck is this Bora going to do against his Zen Mains? You know, like, he knows that he's not in a great position. So he's just going to pass turn. Now, he knows that I can't really do much because, you know, my centipede, I mean, what am I going to blow up? So I'm just going to hit, I'm just going to be content on hitting him for 1,500. You know, if he's just going to let me attack for 15, then, 
I mean, I'm just going to go ahead and take it. And even if he somehow top Dark Arm Dragon, it could drop it. I still have Swift Scarecrow. So I, I still feel like I'm in a pretty good position. The second Swift Scarecrow was kind of overdraw or uh, overkill. <clears throat> but that was fine. I keep activating these Jar Greeds and Legacies. You always keep those in when you side. And it let me draw my, um, my Ladybug. So now I can push in for some damage. <clears throat> why uh, this guy just sits there and he's trying to collect his resources thinking that he's only going to take 1500 so I'm actually just gonna um, I'm gonna attack him for 21 and 15 I think maybe I should have launched uh, the ladybug and attacked him for 24 with the sword it's it's a 500 difference uh, or excuse me it, it's a 300 difference but you know I think maybe that was the play that I probably should have did so I, I don't really think that it matters that much in the uh, in the grand scheme of things so um, now I feel like I have a really good field if he somehow kills my um, my centipede I'm gonna get dragonfly back uh, Zen mains is still kind of problem for him and I've got reckless greed set and I don't know how he could clear my board and get me down because you know I've got the two scarecrows in my hand so um, I'm feeling pretty confident right now so let's see he summons Bora and um, I'm just like okay what's he gonna do he attacks into my uh, my cen or my centipede, so obviously he's dropping Kalut. But um, I'm like, all right, well, whatever. I'm just gonna get another monster anyway. So yeah, <clears throat> and he knows that I'm probably gonna go for Dragonfly because if he can, if he tries to commit to the field, Dragonfly is just gonna torch his field. So you know, I eat the uh, 700 damage, but I feel good because um, you know Dragonfly is coming straight back to my hand, and I still have my Reckless Greed set. I think he puts, I think he sets like one in his back row or something like that. Let's see, one, two, two in his back row. Okay, so I'm going to play conservative here. And I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to try and blow up his um his board. Because I'm kind of sensing like an Icarus attack or something like that. Like why set the cards in your back row? <clears throat> so I figure don't get greedy. Just go ahead, kill the... um. Kill the Bora. Don't, you know, if he can run over my Zen mains with one card, more power to him. I still have Dragonfly if he wants to commit monsters to the board. He plays Sirocco, and I'm like, all right, well, whatever. I have no problem losing my Zen mains. I still have Dragonfly. And if you have Icarus attack, well, whatever. <clears throat> here's here's where things get a little real. So I, I summon Dragonfly. And again, I've got like a ton of cards. He plays Deck Devastation Virus. And I'm like, man, what the fuck? Obviously, you can see I'm going to lose my entire fucking hand. I lose my card card D, my max C, and both of my scarecrows. In addition, I'm going to lose my dragonfly. So, <laughs> clearly, I'm salty as fuck. Like, I just lost every monster that I had, and I'm probably going to lose the game. You know, I had adequate defense, I had my muscle, and now he's just going to start, you know, he top decks a bar, and he's going to start beating me down with a fucking bar. And I'm just like, man, I can't believe this shit. I top that Gigamantis, which I show him, and I'm like, okay, that works really well when I have no Insectors. Unless my next card is Centipede, I'm probably going to lose. He hits me for another another 1,700, and it's good that he doesn't have Kalut. Otherwise, I'd be in really, really big trouble. And I have to show him the D-Wall, so it's like, you know, he knows it's coming. If he has, uh, you know, a way to play around it, then obviously I'm in a bad position. He sets another card in his back row, and he attacks. I'm just going to go ahead and activate it, because if he has Kalud, I lose. And uh, I feel, I mean, he knows what the card is, so I might as well just go ahead and use it. I top deck Ladybug, and, um, you know, I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to play my Ladybug. And, <clears throat> of course, he has Icarus Attack, so I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to chain my Reckless Greed, which <clears throat> kind of sucks. I kind of wanted to use it like during my draw phase or something like that but um I end up drawing another reckless greed and a jar of greed so if I don't lose on this attack I might actually be able to you know mount some offense so um, I'm at 900 to his 800 I'm gonna obviously activate all my draw cards get my three draws and then uh, we're gonna be at turn one for reckless greed I drew card card D which is good cuz like okay well I still got a bunch of draw power combined with Wabaku it's really really nice but he has Book of Moon for my card card D, which kind of sucks. But it doesn't matter because you always, always, always leaving your dimension walls just for cases like this. When you get your opponent down and uh, you need that little extra bit of damage, there we go. So um, the piercing effect actually hurts him and uh, I end up doing enough damage to win game two. 
<clears throat> so we're going into game three. Um, for some reason, I don't know why I was not in my right mind. I side deck in Ojama Trios for Swift Scarecrows, which in hindsight, I don't even understand what the fuck I was thinking, to be honest. Like, <laughs> what does that do? <clears throat> and again, I have Hornet and uh, Centipede in my opening hand, so this is really good. He opens with a set two, and um, he seems to have no response, so... I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to try my effect. And um, he activates Phoenix Chain. And I'm like, fantastic. <laughs> because now I can just insect imitate this for another card. Now he plays Max C, which means I'm not going to go for Dragonfly. I have to go for Centipede now. <clears throat> but it's cool because, um, you know, I still have Hornet. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pop his face down, which is an MST. So he could have chained, but it, it's the same end. So it really wouldn't matter. I'm going to get my Insector Sword. Because, uh, you know, I feel like that that is the best play right now. I don't want to leave him. I don't want to leave my centipede uh, on the field on an island and let him get, like, blown up by a Shura or a Bora or something like that just to get Dragonfly. <clears throat> so I'm going to give him a little bit of protection. I'm going to attack for 24. And then I'm going to set my Legacy of Yadagurusu. And uh, let's see what he has. <clears throat> now, he opened with Whirlwind both games, if I'm not mistaken. So I'm thinking, please don't have Whirlwind again. He just sets a monster, and I'm like, okay, I was like 90% sure he was going to set like an Icarus attack with it. So I'm assuming that that's value, and it ends up being value. So I'm like, all right, well, whatever. I'm just, just going to get free damage. Now, I'm not going to lie. In the back of my head, I'm thinking about that deck devastation first. <laughs> and that's why I was like, I am not going to get Dragonfly. I'm not going to get a bunch of little cards. I'm going to get Gigamantis. Like, I'm trying to search out big monsters, so if he happens to deck devy me, you know, I don't lose everything like I did last game because I'm, I'd already lose Card Card D and Max C. So I'm like, all right, let's get some big monsters in here. He plays Pot of Duality, getting Zephyros, MST, and Kalut. And I'm like, um, I'm not really sure of those three what he's going to take. I'm guessing maybe Kalut because it kills, um, it, it at least kills Centipede. But then if Centipede comes back, Centipede kills whatever you summon. So it's like, eh. He's kind of in a tight spot, to be honest. He's, he's, I think I, I think I am at um, a better position right now. So obviously he's summoning Bora. Um, I have no response to that, and I'm thinking he's just going to attack and he's going to use Kalut. So I'm just going to bounce my centipede back in my hand using Insector Sword's effect, and uh, yeah, he he's going to discard the the Kalut, and I'm going to eat that uh, that eight that 700 damage. So. But, you know, he doesn't have any back row. Like, he has no ways to, he has no way to stop any of my summons. So, I'm like, I'm in a good position. So, he's not really mounting any offense. So, I'm just like, all right, well, I'm just going to keep, um, I'm just going to keep popping your monsters. Now, I'm looking at my graveyard, and I think, I'm, I'm think I'm looking for a way to OT cam right now. But I only side in one Insector Sword. So, that's what I think took so long. I'm like, I'm trying to look in my graveyard and see, and now I'm realizing that if I did get Dragonfly right now, I might be able to um, to OTK him with, like, Gigamantis and stuff like that. But uh, it, it's whatever, you know, it's just, it, it's just Yu-Gi-Oh. And again, I think I should get, I, I think I should get Dragonfly, but I'm, it, I'm playing way too uh, conservative. Like, Deck Devastation Virus is on my mind because he took out five cards with that card. So, you know, I'm stacking up Hopper and Centipede when I probably should have got Dragonfly. But uh, I still feel like I'm in a good position. I have a 2400 beater on the field. Now he finally drew that Whirlwind that I knew he was going to. Remember, guys, it's, the card is at three. So, I mean, by turn three, you're going to get it, like, guaranteed. <clears throat> he summons Bora, and I'm thinking he's just going to get another Kalut. So, uh, he, he's just going to search... For uh, another card um, again I thought it was Kalut but no he's gonna search for Gale now since he had a Gale to his hand I'm automatically gonna max him because I'm like alright if he searched Gale he does not have Kalut so if he wants to special summon that Gale I'm at least gonna get my draw so he plays Gale and I drew a Swift Scarecrow so I'm like alright I feel good he's gonna obviously cut my um my centipede in half and he's gonna run it over with uh with Bora but he can't make any further plays because he's under max C, so he doesn't want to give me a bunch of cards. Plus, all the level 7s and black wings are like complete ass anyway, so I mean, it's not like you really have any optimal plays to do. <clears throat> this is one of those times where I kind of wish that I had a second Insector Sword in my side deck, and I might have to take out like Dark Hole to put in the second sword or something like that because, um, I don't know, it's a lot of times where if you have Centipede and you pop something, 
you just really want Insectosword to like feel safe. So I'm just kind of looking at my my extra deck, and I'm not exactly sure why, to be honest. <clears throat> I'm kind of I'm, I'm just trying to judge. Does this guy have Kalu? Like, I mean, obviously I can blow up the Bora and attack over the Gale, but I don't do any damage. So I figure I've got you know two card Tardis. I've got Swift Scarecrow. I'm just gonna go ahead and risk it. So I'm going to attack for 400, and he doesn't have the Kalut. And then in main phase two, obviously I'm just gonna blow up the Gale. And then I think I'm going to go ahead and search Dragonfly because nothing else in the um, nothing else makes any sense. <clears throat> he took what's it called? He took 600. He should have actually took in. Uh, he should have actually only taken 400. I, I don't know why. Actually, looking back at this, why he took that much oh no wait i'm sorry i blew up the whirlwind that's right that's right i remember thinking that um i'm not scared of his gale if his gale just kills my centipede i don't give a shit but i, I remember thinking if he top decks like uh a sure or something like that that could be a problem and he plays cards for uh for black feathers and i'm thinking to myself okay yeah i mean he already has two more draws so the odds of him having a sure are pretty decent and then he ends up drawing two more cards off of Allure, and he uh, he he gets rid of uh, Sirocco. He sets one, sets two, and now I think he's going to cut my centipede. Yeah, he's going to cut my centipede in half, and he's going to run it over. Now with two back row, I guess I have to put him on either like an Icarus or a Delta Crow. I would say are two pretty good bets right now, but um, his life points are really low, and I have. Swift Scarecrow, so I don't feel like he's going to threaten me at all. <clears throat> I drew a uh, Legacy of Yada. I'm just activating it because I'm trying to um I'm trying to draw like an Intech imitation, <clears throat> and he ends up using Book of Moon. I just summoned that and I attacked because uh I'm I'm trying not to have him um be able to Icarus me. You know I was trying to just push in for a game right there and not give him two cards to Icarus. I guess he would have had the Icarus is on fiendish chain. So. He top decks the Shura. Obviously, I'm going to activate Wabaku. And I don't really think he has any plays right here. Yeah, he just scoops it up because Armor Master, none of the sevens do anything. So, thank you guys for watching as always. Um, I'm going to be uploading a lot more matches soon. Take care.